Dudes, welcome back to the bench. Today, we're gonna be painting a wall yet again. It's been a little bit since we did one of these just because my mother recently got surgery and I've been taking care of her, or at least helping. So I haven't really had the time to go ahead and hop back on the wall, but I'm glad to do it because last time we did a wall, I asked you guys if you wanna partake in a little bit of a name exchange. And one of you guys hit me with, man, hit me in the heartstrings. You hit, you went ahead and told me how your stepson's father used to do graffiti and he used to write red. So you asked if I could do that in today's video and that's precisely what we're doing. So hopefully you guys go on to enjoy it. Hopefully we have a bit of fun on a wall. And that's really the mission of today, man. Just have fun on a wall. Enjoy the last couple of, you know, nice days of summer. You know, my dad was a smart man. When I was a kid, he would always tell me, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. The seven Ps, if you will. And throughout my life, I've, I've done well to remember this lesson. I've tried to use it and implement it, and it's paid off really well, except today. Today, when I kind of sketched this piece on a wall and forgot to check if I had white paint. So it turns out, although I have a couple of white cans, none of them are really the same kind of white, and all of them are just about empty. Real smart, I know we've all been there. We've all been in that position in graffiti where like we go to a wall, we think we have everything we need, only to find out, no, we're missing a certain can. Man, I, I gotta get my chair back for here, because. I got nowhere to sit while I, while I speak to you guys, but check it out. We went ahead and sketched the piece out. I'm liking the way it came out. I didn't know if I actually wanted to include like a little bit of an onomatopoeia splash in the background with like the spiky area, but I decided to throw it in there because, well, you guys on Instagram, you see I was sketching this on Instagram live and a lot of you guys were telling me, you know, different color recommendations that you wanted to see me do on the actual piece itself. And I figured that would provide a great little bit of extra element that I can add color to that you guys recommend. And I think that's actually what we're gonna do more of here, where I do name requests and name exchanges with you guys, and I kind of let you guys choose the fill-in for me. Now, the issue here is I have a lot of different spray paint bands with a lot of different variations of the same color. Like, I got five different yellows, but none of them are the same. So I gotta see how I'm gonna fill this in, because you guys on Instagram wanted me to fill this in with, like, yellows, oranges, and reds. So I figured, not only in honor of the name, but in honor of you guys, we'll go ahead and fill it in just like that. I gotta figure out what reds and such I'm gonna use, because a lot of those cans I just showed you are actually empty. Or at least close to it, so I may not have enough even for something small like this. Regardless, we'll figure something out, man. We'll, 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 we'll trudge, I can't speak, we'll trudge through this together. So here is where we're gonna have to improvise. I might end up filling in this kind of like splash in the background, this onomatopoeia explosion, if you will, with a light blue as a little bit of a compromise, seeing as I don't have all that much white. And I think I'm actually gonna do what I was talking about in the last video, where I start in the background and I work my way to the foreground. This is typically how I like to do my oil painting especially my less hyper-realistic oil painting. I think it's a little bit obvious, but you know, the, the white may have given me a little bit of trouble. So we went ahead and swapped to the light blue for a little bit of a, like a pow effect, and that's what we're going with. I think it still works, we're just waiting for this portion of the white to actually dry, that way I can paint over it. I don't want to paint over it while it's still wet. It's just not a good idea, especially if it's two different brands of paint, then they may not mix really well, and you'll get a lot of cracking as a result of that. So we're just waiting on that, and then we'll go ahead and knock in the rest of the blue fill-in. After this, we're gonna begin the fill-in. Now I had you guys actually on Instagram, go ahead and let me know what type of fill-in you want me to do what colors and all that sort of stuff so if you're not already following me on instagram i got a link in the description down below and i think that's something we'll be doing more of with this series i'll kind of let you guys make the piece along with me you know allow you guys to choose the fill in colors the actual design a little bit and we can kind of go off of each other make it a little bit of a collaboration of sorts the chance to collaborate with you guys for stuff like this i think is a blast This is exactly why I like to paint from back to forward, right? And this illustrates a really good example, because as you can see, a little bit of the R is already filled in, and then I did the drop shadow after that. As a result, some of the drop shadow bled onto the actual fill in itself. Now you could of course say, oh well, you know, good can control will take care of that, but regardless of how good your can control is, you'll inevitably have to go ahead and cut back either way, because no one's perfect, we're all human, so you're bound to get some amount of overspray. But instead of having to go ahead and cut back with this orange, I could have just did the drop shadow first, 
first. And as you'll see over here on the E, the drop shadow does actually go over the actual fill-in, but since it's not filled in, I'll just cover that anyway. It's like killing two birds with one stone. It's a lot more efficient use of paint and time. As I was painting this, I went ahead and saw an opportunity to teach newer graffiti arts a little bit of a technique that might make outlining just a little tad bit easier for you. So if you've ever been painting your piece and you kind of get lost in your own line work, this right here is a great way to keep track of what needs to be outlined. You see, right here we have the leg of the R that comes straight down, and then it comes into a little bit of a point right there. You'll notice we actually left a little bit of a gap right in this little tiny area that we didn't fill in. Instead, we came straight down and then we came back up and over, still leaving a little bit of a gap. This lets us know that everything from this part of the red up needs to be filled in, and everything from this part of the red down needs to be filled in. As to where the gap is where the outline will end up going. This allows you to keep track of your line work that ends up going into the actual letter itself. Now, if you guys are having trouble with getting a more dusty fill-in with a little bit of overspray outside of your letters as you fill in, then try filling in like this. Start with your can at one side of the letter and point it going into the actual fill-in. That way your overspray isn't actually hitting the outside of this letter. Spray really soft and gently to make sure that you're not putting too much and overshooting to the overspray on the opposite side. As you go ahead and get towards the letter, you can begin to rotate the can, that way it's parallel to the wall. And as you near the other side, you begin to tilt it back towards the inside of the fill-in. That way you always maintain the spray away from giving you that overspray. All right, the basic straight letter is pretty close to done. We're almost at the finish line, but now we have to outline it. And most of my black cans don't work. They're, they're quite clogged, and honestly, I just gotta shake them for like 30 minutes. Which, let's be real, I'm not trying to sit out here and shake it, so I might have to find a different color to go ahead and outline with. I was thinking maybe a dark purple, but we'll have to go ahead and see. If I do decide to sit here for 30 minutes and shake this thing so like that it works, then great. You know, we'll be using this black can. But if not, we'll just go ahead and throw a different color on there. But the next time you guys see this piece, it'll be all done. And we're back in the studio, much later at night, mind you. But dudes, before we go ahead and take a look at today's piece, let me know your tag name in the comments down below. Let's collaborate a little bit more and do some more name exchanges. If you guys happen to rock my name for these exchanges, feel free to go ahead and shoot it to me on Instagram or wherever you possibly can. And if I see it, I'll go ahead and feature it in the video. But with that said, let's check out the piece. I'm not gonna lie, th this, this didn't take much time at all. I honestly spent most of my time shaking paint. <laughs> but regardless, it was an absolute blast to do. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to go ahead and give it a like. If we can get this video to 500 likes, then I'll bust out the next name exchange video as soon as humanly possible. And if you're new here, subscribe, stick around for a while. We got ourselves a great graffiti community. But on that note, I'll catch you guys next week. Until then, peace.